Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and you're watching a video where I'll talk about the legality of private servers. Now, in this video, I'm going to be quoting sections of UK law. Every country obviously has different laws, but as I'm English, I can only really talk about the laws where I am. You'll have to look up yourself if the laws where you live are any different. Now, with that out of the way, let's begin. We all should know what a private server is. It's when you play your online game, but instead of connecting to the game's official servers, you connect to a third party. Often a fan-made project or some sort of independent service, Blizzard will tell you that you're not allowed to do this, and so will all the brainwashed sheep over at MMO Champion. They'll say that in the terms and conditions, or TOS, it basically says Blizzard can terminate your access to their service if they find out you've been playing on a private server. Oh no! You won't be able to play on Landlords of Garrison Craft anymore! But that doesn't mean you can't take your business elsewhere. If you buy a new Focus from Ford, you can get a service plan with them. So, they'll service your new car every year as long as you don't modify it. So, if you go and stick a spoiler and a body kit and the thing, you've just broken the terms of service. And your service plan goes straight out the window, so they won't look at your car anymore. But, you can just get your car serviced at an independent garage instead. The same goes for Warcraft. Play on private servers and you run the risk of Blizzard cutting your access to their servers. But that's it. Because you see this? All of this is not legally binding whatsoever. I refer you to the Unfair Terms of Consumer Contracts Regulations 1999 Law, Section 5A, which says, A contractual term which has not been individually negotiated shall be regarded as unfair. And if the law says it's unfair, then it's not lawful. Now some idiot is going to say, ah, but you agreed to it by clicking the Terms and Conditions button. To that, I point you to section 5.2, which says, A term shall always be regarded as not having been individually negotiated when it has been drafted in advance and the customer has therefore not been able to influence the substance of the term. So, because Blizzard made all these terms up before I even bought the game from the shop, they are also unlawful. Links to these laws are in the video description. So yeah, this entire dictionary worth of text has absolutely nothing to do with the actual law. So, if you bought the game and now play on a private server, don't worry, you're not breaking the law, and if Blizzard ever come knocking, you can slap your dick in their face. Give me your, give me your, give me your attention. But what about the other end? What about the people hosting the servers that you're connecting to? Are they breaking the law? Well, here in England, we have some of the best copyright laws in the world. By law, people are allowed to remix copyrighted work and even data mine programs so long as you don't charge people for what you find. But here's where things start getting a little bit more complicated. Almost all private servers don't use any code made by Blizzard. Private servers run on open source homebrew code, so it's not actually stolen property. It's code all written by fans, so open source code is not actually breaking the law. To put it another way, if I decided to repaint the Mona Lisa from scratch, the new version of the painting is owned by me and not the original painter. All the properly copyrighted code is all saved on your game disc, which you purchased. All those NPCs, those places, those graphics, those sounds, none of that is server side, it's all client side, bought and paid for by the end user. So, how can Blizzard shut down a private server if they're not providing an illegal service? Well, there are three ways. One, they can scare the server with a legal letter and hope they don't fight back. This tactic works fantastic in some countries. Bonjour, you cheese-eating surrender monkeys! Two, if the server is offering the Warcraft client as a download from the server's website, then Blizzard can very easily hit them with a huge copyright legal case. Then there's number three, if the server is making buckets and buckets of cash, then Blizzard can quite easily say that this private server is taking revenue directly out of their pocket. Back to point two, so if a private server offers the client program and they're not located in an untouchable country like Russia or China, then they do run the risk of being shut down and not having a legal leg to stand on. Like I mentioned, some countries simply don't give a flying fuck about what the Americans say though, so if a server is hosted in Russia or China, it can pretty much do what it wants, because UK, US and European copyright laws are totally ignored. Now I'm sure someone has already started foaming at the mouth before they've reached this point in the video. They've already written a comment 
probably in capital letters, mentioning Wowscape. To counter that, I'd like to remind you that those people were making half a million fucking dollars a month from their server. So it's hardly surprising that a court saw this as a direct unlawful threat to Blizzard's business. Now, I'll be the first to admit that really this is all quite a big legal grey area. And although technically private servers where I am are perfectly legal, this is largely due to a combination of the recently relaxed copyright guidelines and that the law doesn't really properly draw out definitions on this sort of thing. Without properly drawn up laws, it's very hard for Blizzard to say that a service that makes no profit, that's not using their code, and that doesn't offer the client for free is actually damaging their business. I'm sure when Retail WoW takes another big population hit after Legion bombs, Blizzard will want to blame private servers again and another popular server will receive a threatening letter. I just hope that next time the server owners are more aware of how the law works before shitting their pants and packing up shop. I hope that next time, whichever server that it ends up being on the receiving end of Blizzard's rage, think for a second and realise that in no European country can a person or corporation actually take you to trial within a week of sending a fucking letter. I hope that the next server realise that throughout most of the Western world, there are very lengthy procedures that need to happen before you can stand trial. Plus, believe it or not, you actually need to be told exactly what law you have broken before you can even get any of that actually moving. Hopefully, the next server will spot a fucking obvious scare tactic. Hopefully, the next server will work out that only the police can tell you that you're standing trial and not a fucking letter from a corporate fucking lawyer. Next time, hopefully, the next server will be Ashran because that one was fucking toilet. Hello sailors, thank you for watching the video, hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support me in my future videos, there's a Patreon link down there if you want to go that way, or by request, I've now added a direct PayPal donate button, so if you want to do it that way, do it that way. There's other things you can do, you can follow me on social media like Facebook and Twitter, and why not have a look at these other videos I'm linking on the screen right now. Anyway, that's all, bye bye.